Hello everyone and welcome to Midnight Sun Gaming. All the cards from the Great Dark Beyond have been revealed and we're going to be reviewing and rating every single one of them. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and give this video a thumbs up, it helps me out a lot. But for now, let's jump into the card reviews. Starting up here with Death Knight. Uh, we do have a new Draenei, which is uh, the newest tribe in Hearthstone. We have a 1 mana 1 3 with 1 on Holy Rune requirement, which is the Arcanite Death Speaker. After another friendly minion is reborn, summon a copy of it. So let's say we have this on board. You already have a reborn minion on board and it dies. It's gonna summon uh, two copies instead of one with one health remaining. Now, this is a premium statted minion, and we know Death Knight has a bunch of good reborn minions. I don't see this not seeing play. This is a really good card, especially in standard. I'll give this a 4 stars in standard. In wild, I'll give it a 3. Next, we have a 1 mana spell for Death Knight with 2 blood rune uh, requirements, which is the orbital moon, give a minion taunt and lifesteal. And if you played an adjacent card this turn, also give it reborn. Now, giving for 1 mana, taunt, lifesteal, and reborn for a minion can be super powerful, especially if, for example, you cheat out uh, a minion that has rush. And like you have a big minion that got discounted for one mana, you slap taunt, life scene, and reborn on it. Uh, you're gonna like stabilize, help you uh, gain some life, uh, put a threat on the board thanks to the taunt, and also it's a sticky minion uh, thanks to the reborn. Now it does have a double blood rune requirement, which could help this card back, especially that you cannot run it in rainbow. But overall, uh, really nice card. I'll give it a three in standard, in wild, I'll give it two. Next up, we have our first starship piece here. And if you don't know what a starship piece is or a starship, uh, basically, when a starship piece die, uh, it's gonna like, create this dormant minion. And all your starship pieces, uh, when they die, also they're gonna be added to that dormant minion. And you can activate it anytime for five mana. And you're gonna get this gigantic minion with all the starship pieces, uh, combined stats and effect. Uh, they could have Rush, Taunt, etc. For this minion, for example, it's a 2 mana 3 2, the Guiding Figure. It has Spell Burst, trigger random friendly minions that rattle, and it's a Starship piece. So, at a base level, it's actually a really nice card. Like, outside of the Starship mechanic, this is really nice. If you care about some big death rattles, uh, you can activate it really easily with this. I'm gonna give it a 4 stars in standard. In wild, I'm gonna give it 3. And also, having the Starship piece. Uh, mechanic, which means you can uh, be able to activate the spell burst after you launch your starship, which is really nice. Moving on here to the Assimilating Blight, which is a 3 mana, 1 blood rune, 2 unholy rune requirements. I believe it's like the first card that has this specific combination. Anyway, it's a 3 mana spell. It says, discover a 3 cost death rattle minion, summon it with the bone. This is a very interesting card. Like you get already sticky minion because it has a death rattle and you slap a reborn on it. I think the only thing that could hold this card back is the uh, rune requirements because it's a difficult uh, rune combination. We don't see it that much often. I mean, it is played here and there, but because you have this restriction, I think it's going to restrict this card a little bit. For that reason, I'm going to give it two stars uh, in standard, uh, two stars in wild. Next, we have yet another starship piece, which is the Soulbound Spire. It's a 3 mana 2 2 with Death Rattle, summon a minion with cost equal to this minion's attack. So, at the base level, this dies, it's gonna summon a Doomsayer. I'm joking. Uh, it's gonna summon a random 2 cost minion. But if you add it to your uh, starship, and your starship becomes like really big, you have, for example, that uh, a starship with 10 attack, suddenly you're gonna be getting a 10 drop when your starship dies. Now, if you want to play like uh, a starship deck, you're going to have to include all the starship pieces, even though I think like a guiding figure is a better uh, card on its own. Like, yeah, okay, it's a three mana 2-2 two -two that summons a random 2-drop on its own. It's not that exciting. But if you want to play for your starship, this is a really nice piece to have. So for that reason, I'm going to give it three stars uh, in standard. In wild, I'm going to give it two. Next up here, we have Suffocate, which is a 4-mana shadow spell for Death Knight. It says, destroy a minion, which is basically assassinate for Rogue. But there's more. If you're building a starship, also destroy a random neighbor. So basically, it's 4-mana, destroy 2 minions. Now, I'm not very excited about uh, this type of removal, uh, especially like if you want to target a specific minion, and the neighbor is going to be a little bit random. And also, you're not that excited about like 4-mana, destroy 2 minions. 
uh, Death Knight has better ways to deal with the port, and uh, only this condition applies if you're building a starship. Like for example, if you didn't have a starship piece die, it's just basically a four mana destroy one minion. For that restriction, I'm gonna give it two stars in standard. In wild, I'm gonna give it one. You're not playing this ever in wild. Even though if you're playing like a starship deck, I don't think uh, you want to play this card. Next up here, we have Airlock Breach, which is a six mana spell, one blood, one unholy rune requirement. Hey, we can play it in rainbow. And it says summon a 5 5 undead with taunt and give your hero plus five health. Spend five courses to do it again. So potentially here, if you have the corpses, you're going to be summoning 10-10 in stats with taunt, and you're going to give your hero plus 10 health, which I think is actually pretty good. And also, uh, you want to like ramp up your uh, climactic uh, necrotic explosion. And this is a corpse spender. It's defensive. It works in rainbow. This is a great card. I think I'm going to give it four stars in standard. I'm going to give it three in white. Uh, it's not inherently bad in white. Next up, we have our first Death Knight Legendary, which is Exarch Maladar. I believe I'm pronouncing this right, which is also a Draenei. It's a 6 mana 5 5 with one unholy rune requirement. It has Battle Cry. The next card you play this turn costs corpses instead of mana. Hey, here's another course spender and a way to mana cheat. This card is insane. Even if you cheat it out, uh, for example, an 8 cost minion or a 10 cost spell, like the uh, Climatic Necrotic Explosion, it's gonna be nuts. And also, the corpse spend, like uh, you're gonna be spending, let's say, 10 corpses on your uh, Climatic Necrotic Explosion, they're gonna count immediately towards the spell and they're gonna be applied immediately when you cast the spell, which is great. This card is insane, and I think it's gonna be a staple uh, for all the Death Knight decks that want to run like at least one Unholy Rune. I'm gonna give this a five stars in standard. Also in Wild, like this is a consideration for even Death Knight. I'm gonna give it four stars there. Next, we have the Eight Hands from Beyond, which is the other Death Knight legendary with double blood rune requirement. It's an eight mana, eight, eight beast. With battle cry, destroy both players' decks except the eight highest cost cards in each. Now, at first glance, this effect is really crazy. Like we're destroying both decks and only keeping the highest cost cards. And I, I know like this idea here is like you're playing a control deck, your opponent doesn't have uh, better cards than you like at the high end and you can like grind them out but at the same time like you're destroying your cards you're not gonna win in fatigue if you have both uh, the same amount of cards i don't know this is a very weird card uh i don't know where do you want to slot it especially that has double blood rune requirement for that reason i'm gonna give it two stars in standard in wild i don't think you play this i'm gonna give it one star and finally here for Death Knight, we have a 10 mana minion, which is 10 mana, 8-7, with one unholy rune requirement, the Weakener of Souls, it has Taunt, and Reborn, and Death Rattle, Resurrect, a different friendly Death Rattle minion. Now this is a very sticky minion, because it has Taunt, and it has Reborn, and also it has a Death Rattle of uh, resurrecting another friendly minion, which is like multiple bodies into one. And if you're playing like uh, a Death Rattle DK, you have some premium Death Rattles available to Death Knight in standard. Uh, you want to play this card also. You can cheat it out uh, thanks to Exarch Maladar. Uh, you can spend like 10 corpses and summon it for free on turn 6 or on turn 5 if you have the coin and you have enough corpses. This is a really nice card. Actually, I'm going to give it 4 stars in standard. In wild, I'm not sure about uh, like this strategy. I'm gonna give it two stars in wild. Moving on here to Druid. And starting up here with Arcanite Revelation, it's a one mana arcane spell that says draw a card. If it's a spell, it costs one less. So potentially here you have zero mana draw a card, or if you whiff on the spell, it's one mana draw a card, which is still really good. And I believe every single Druid deck would want to run this. Even in wild also you play this. I'm gonna give this actually a five stars in standard. It's gonna see play in every druid deck. In wild, I'm gonna give it four. Like we do have a lot of card draw in wild for druid, but if you need more, like you can slot this one. It's cheap. Uh, it has like potential mana cheat. It's great. And also it has the arcane tag, uh, which we're going to see in a bit why it's relevant. So five stars in standard, four stars in wild. Moving on here to another arcane spell, which is the astral phaser. It's a two cost spell. It has choose one. Deal 2 damage to 2 random enemy minions or make 1 dormant for 2 turns. Now this is like a potential a temporary removal or uh, if you're fighting like for the early game, you can destroy 2 uh, minions 
if they have like uh, two health uh, at max. Uh, this is a little bit clunky. I think uh, Druid has better cards uh, to work with. Mm, but it is an arcane spell and you can double dip on it uh, as we're going to see in a bit. But I'm not very sold on this effect. For that reason, just because it has the arcane uh, tag, I'm going to give it three stars in standard. In wild, I'm going to give it one. Next, we have uh, the first starship piece for Druid. Also, Druid uh, is going to be getting uh, some starship pieces. And we have here the Shatari Cloakfield. It's a 2-mana 1-3 with Elusive. If you don't know what Elusive is, just a reminder, it means it can't be targeted by spells or hero powers. And also, your first spell each turn costs one less. Yay, more mana cheat for Druid. And remember, you can bring this back with your starship, uh, and you're going to get also this effect. Also, your starship entirely will get elusive because it copies the entire text, which is really nice. And I believe uh, this is going to be a key card uh, for the starship Druid archetype. For that reason, I'm going to give it four stars in standard. I'm going to give it two in wild. I don't believe like the starship... Uh, mechanic is gonna be good and wild like for all the classes i don't think like starship is fast enough to see competitive play in wild for that reason i'm gonna give it two stars there next up we have yet another starship piece which is a three mana three three starlight reactor after you cast an arcade spell where you cast it targets chosen randomly and that's why I was saying why the arcane tag is really important for Druid this expansion. It's because of cards like this. And it's going to let you like double dip on your arcane spells. And also you're going to get it back uh, with your starship to also benefit again from that effect. Uh, for that reason, also 4 stars in standard. In wild, 2 stars. Next up, we have an arcane spell. Which is the Distress Signal, a 4 mana arcane spell, summon 2 random 2 cost minions, refresh 2 mana crystals. So this is like potentially at a base level, uh, 2 mana uh, summon 2 cost minions, which is uh, not exciting, but also not bad. And if you can, for example, combine it with a card like this, uh, you're going to potentially have like 0 mana summon 2 cost minions because you're going to be refreshing 4 mana crystals. Also, not summon 2 random. You're going to be summoning 4 uh, 2 cost minions for 0 mana potentially, which is really nice if you consider it. And if you want to play like the arcane package alongside the starship package, this is a card uh, I believe you would consider for your deck. For that reason, I'm going to give it 3 stars in standard. In wild, I'm going to give it 2 stars. Next, we have our first Druid Legendary, which is Exarch Othar, I believe that's its name, which is a 4 mana 3 3 Draenei. Battle Cry, if you're building a starship, get 3 different arcane spells and reduce their cost by 2. Yay, even more mana cheat for Druid. <laughs> and we have here the starship uh, synergy, we also have the arcane spell synergy. So if you're playing this deck, you do want to add uh, Exarch Othar, and also uh, you reduce their cost by 2. Uh, you don't have to play them this turn. They can stay in your hand. You can combine them uh, with cards like uh, Starlight Reactor. And like uh, on a later turn, you're going to be able to play multiple uh, Arcane spells in the same turn. So you can like benefit and double dip on them, which is really good. So for that reason, also Exarch Othar is going to be getting 4 stars in standard. Not quite 5 stars because you do have the restriction of building a starship. Because maybe you don't want to play a starship through it. And in wild, I'm going to give it 2. Next up, we have yet another arcane spell uh, for Druid, and this is an insane one. It's the Cosmic Phenomenon. It's a 5 mana arcane spell. Summon 3, 2, 3 elementals with taunt. If your board is full, give your minions plus 1, plus 1. So at a base level, 5 mana, I summon what, like 6, 9 uh, in stats uh, with taunt, which is really good, especially like defensive if playing against aggro. And if you can double dip on this spell, you're going to be summoning 6 instead. And uh, probably you're going to have your board full and buff your minions by plus two, plus two. And for example, you double it uh, with the Starlight Reactor, which is really good. Also, at the base level, as we said, it's a really good card. I'm going to give it four stars in standard. And in wild, I'm going to give it three stars, actually, because it's good on its own. Next up, we have another legendary for Druid, which is uh, Ulu, the Ever Drifter. It's a five mana, six, five beads. Each turn this is in your hand, gain two random choose one choices. So it's going to pick from the, uh, let's say if you're playing it in standard, it's going to look at the choose one choices in standard, and it's going to give you two random ones. Uh, and when you play this uh, minion, it's going to have uh, these two choose one choices as its battle cry. Now, this is a more 
uh, on the fun side in my opinion because it's not consistent now the stats aren't bad and it is aggressively stated somehow it's a 6545 but uh, the choose one could be beneficial could be random maybe uh, you want to play something and the choose one effects aren't that great so you're not very excited about it but on average it's not a very bad card for that reason i'm gonna give it three stars in standard in wild i'm gonna give it two Next up, we have a new arcane spell uh, for Druid, which is the Final Frontier. It's a 7 mana, discover a 10 cost minion from the past, set its cost to 1. Which means, in total, you're going to be playing a 10 cost minion for 8 mana. Because you're going to be paying the 7 mana for the discover and 1 mana for the minion. Now, how good is this? There are a lot of bad 10 cost minions in wild. Now, the pool is like super big and you're not going to consistently get anything good. But hey, maybe you can like discount it or get it uh, randomly from Exarch Ozar, and maybe you're gonna like combine it with Starlight Reactor and get like multiple 10 cost uh, minions in your hand, play them for one. That could be like a big swing, but to actually run this in your deck, uh, I think it's a little bit clunky. Maybe you get lucky, maybe not. For that reason, I'm gonna give it two stars in standard. In wild, I'm gonna give it one. And finally here for Druid, uh, we have a big beast, which is an 8 mana 8-8 eight, eight star grazer. It has elusive, taunt, and spell burst, give your hero plus 8 attack this turn, and gain 8 armor. This is like really a huge minion, but seriously, I don't know which archetype uh, it slots in. Like it doesn't have uh, some arcane spell synergies, and it's not a starship piece, but maybe hey, you want some uh, high-end cards, uh, you want some like... Uh, uh, finisher and also it can gain you some armor it's a sticky minion because it has elusive and taunt it's going to be difficult for the opponent to deal with it but uh, the spell burst part like you're not going to play it on eight uh, you want to play it like with a combination of another cheap spell we we did see like uh, a cheap spell here which is the arcanite revelation and also druid has like access to innervates and stuff like that but i don't know what this slots into for that reason i'm going to give it three stars in standard in wild i'm going to give it two Moving on here to Hunter, we have a new 1 mana 1 2 Draenei, which is the Rangari Scout. It says, after you discover a card, get a copy of it. So, as we're going to see in a bit, uh, we have some cards that are going to help us discover. And this guy is going to let us double dip on these discovers and get extra copies. Now, I feel like uh, the devs are like trying to push uh, a control Hunter in this expansion, as you're going to see in a bit as well. Uh, now, do I think this is good? It's actually pretty decent. Also, it, like, it has the Draenei uh, tag if you care about that. And it's like extra copies of cards. It's decent. I'm going to give it 3 stars in standard. In wild, I'm going to give it 2. Next up, we have uh, the first Starship piece for Hunter. Also, Hunter is going to be uh, like a Starship class. It's the Biopod. It's a 2 mana 2-2 two -two with Death Rattle. Deal damage equal to this minion's attack to a random enemy. So at a base level, when this dies, it's going to deal like 2 damage to a random enemy. It says enemy, not enemy minion, so it could hit face. And also, for example, if you hand buff this uh, somehow, it's going to deal more damage. And it is worth noting, since it's a starship piece, when it's going to get added to your starship, and you launch your starship, when your starship dies, it's going to deal uh, your starship's damage into a random enemy. Now, if you want to play like starship uh, hunter, you're going to be adding like this starship piece. For that reason, I'm going to give it 3 stars in standard. In wild, I'm going to give it 2. Next up, hey, we have a new discover card, which is a 2 mana spell, detailed note. Discover a piece that costs 5 or more, reduce its cost by 2. Now, this is a very interesting card. So, it's like 2 mana and you get a 2 mana discount. So, let's say 0 mana discover a piece that costs 5 or more. How good is that? It's okay, I guess. But I'm not very excited about this card. Now, you get a nice discount. Uh, for that reason, I'm going to give it 3 stars as well. Maybe an optimistic 3. In wild, I'm going to give it 1. You're not playing this in wild. Because the beast pool is horrible in wild. <laughs> Next up here, we have a new egg for Hunter, which is a 2 mana 0 2. Uh, extraterrestrial egg. Death rattle. Summon a 3 5 beast uh, that attacks the lowest health enemy. Now, for 2 mana, if you get like a 3 5 that attacks immediately, it's really nice. All it needs to do is like a way to activate it. And we know like Hunter has ways to activate uh, that Death Rattle. And also we're going to see a very interesting legendary in a bit that could help activate uh, this egg. But on a base level, 
it's not bad. I'm gonna give it three in stars and standard. In wild, actually, I'm gonna give it three as well because in wild you have like way cheaper uh, and better ways to like activate your death rattles, like cards like play dead, which is one mana spell, and so on. Next up here we have laser barrage, which is a two mana spell. It deals three damage to a minion, and if you're building a starship, also damages its neighbors. So this is potentially like dealing nine damage to enemy minions for two mana, which is actually really good. And if you're building your starship, it means uh, you are committing yourself into a slower game plan, and you need like some early game removal, and this is a really nice one. If Starship Hunter is actually good, this is like a four stars card. If not, it's as best maybe a two stars or a three stars. But you know what? I'm a little bit optimistic about the Starship mechanic for uh, the set. So for that reason, I'm going to give it uh, four stars in standard. In wild, I'm going to give it two. Next up, we have our first Hunter Legendary, which is Exarch Nihil. It's a three mana, three, four Draenei with Battle Cry. Replace your hero power with tracking, uh, which is uh, this one mana hero power. You know, like the one spell tracking, it has the exact same effect, which is discovering a card from your deck. And like this is pushing more of a control and slower Hunter game plan, which I really love. But I don't know if it's going to be competitive enough. We do have like a bunch of discover cards and discover synergy cards. We do have like a bunch of removals as well. And we also have like the starship mechanic. If it works out for Hunter, it's going to be great. And a card like this will help you like fetch the pieces, fetch the removals, fetch everything you need. I love this card. For that reason, I'm going to be biased a bit. I'm going to give it four stars in standard. And in wild, actually, I'm going to give it three. If you're playing like a Reno Hunter, this fits perfectly. And next up, we have the other legendary for Hunter, which is a three mana 12 12 beats with insane stats. But of course, there is a downside because it starts dormant and it's dormant for five turns. But at the end of your turn, you destroy the minion to the right of this to awaken one turn sooner. So, for example, if you play, where was it? It's here. If you play this egg, which is the extra stereo egg, on turn two, you can follow it up immediately with the Gorm. And uh, of course, you need to put Gorm on the left of the egg so it can destroy the egg and get the 3 5 immediately. And also, you're gonna have it awaken one turn sooner. So, if you have like these uh, small death rattles that you wanna proc, this is a really great enabler. And uh, you're gonna have a 12 12 beast, which is insane for only 3 mana. Now, I don't know if this archetype is gonna come together. I'm gonna stay on the safe side on this one. I'm gonna give it three stars in standard. In wild, it's way too slow. I'm gonna give it two. Next up, we have a new epic weapon uh, for Hunter, which is three mana, two, three. And it has two attack. Uh, excuse me, it has plus two attack. If you discover it this turn, spell burst, your hero is immune this turn. So for one swing, if you cast any spell, uh, you're gonna have uh, immune while attacking which is really nice help you uh, get some really good trades and also as long as you keep discovering you're gonna give this weapon a uh, plus two attack which is potentially like a four three weapon for three and one turn uh, it's, you're gonna be immune this is a really nice weapon and i don't know if it's gonna be good like outside of the discover package but like Hunter has a lot of discover cards, even though you're not focused on them. And this style of weapon is actually pretty nice. I'm gonna give this card a four stars in standard. In wild, I'm gonna give it three. Next up here, we have a new epic uh, for Hunter, which is three mana, two, six, the specimen claw. After your opponent plays a minion, attack it. And also it's a starship piece. Now at a base level, it's not very exciting. Like you have a two attack minion, they're maybe like gonna play some minions, you're gonna bump into them, maybe they're not gonna die. It's not very exciting. But because it's a starship piece, and when you start like building your starship, and it has like, I don't know, 10 attack, 12 attack, it becomes really interesting, especially like the six health you're adding to your starship as well, which means they're gonna be playing a lot of minions before uh, they can like kill your starship through these attacks and if they don't have hard removal They're not gonna be able to stick aboard, which is really interesting But it's a bit slow because like you need to be playing like a starship hunter And I'm still not sure if the starship archetype for hunter specifically uh, because it's a slow uh, Mechanic if it's gonna work out for hunter, but as I said, I'm very optimistic For that reason, I'm gonna give it three stars like the starship pieces. I'm not giving them like a low score 
uh, because of that mechanic. But at the base level, this would be like a two stars uh, at max. But because it's a starship, I'm going to give it three in standard. In wild, I'm going to give it one star. And finally, here for Hunter, we have a five mana spell, which is the Alien Encounters. Summons two, two five beasts with taunt, cost one less for each card you've discovered this game. So this is potentially a zero mana uh, for 10 with taunt, if you've discovered enough. So also this is playing uh, uh, for the late game. And even like if you discover like twice, this is three mana, summon two, two fives with taunt, which is really good actually. Uh, I actually like the Discover Hunter uh, uh, archetype they're like trying to push here. And for that reason, I'm going to be biased towards it. I'm going to give it four stars in standard. In wild, I'm going to give it three. Our next class here is Mage. And starting up here, we have Spontaneous Combustion, which is a two mana fire spell. It deals four damage to a random enemy. If you played an elemental last turn, choose the target. So this is potentially two mana deal four to a target of your choosing, which is really nice. And it's also a fire spell. We're going to see a bit why this is important. Now, the condition here, if you played an elemental, and as we're going to see here, they're trying to push uh, two things for mage, which is elementals and fire spells. And this works with both of them. I think this card is going to be good because I do think uh, the archetype uh, is going to be competitive, in my opinion, based on the cards I've already saw. We're going to see them together in a bit. But uh, this card alone is actually pretty nice. I'm going to give it four stars in standard. In wild, I'm going to give it three. Next up, we have a 3 mana 3 4 Elemental War Mage, which is the Blasteroid. Battle Cry, shuffle 5 random fire spells into your deck, they cost 2 less. Now, this is an insane amount of mana cheat. You can like cheat out up to 10 mana and you're getting extra values. Now, of course, they are shuffled into your deck and they're random, but the fire spells pool in standard is actually pretty good. And we're going to see we have a lot of ways to like draw cards in this archetype. For that reason, I'm gonna give it 4 stars in standard. In wild, I'm gonna give it 3. Moving on here to one of the best cards for Mage, this expansion, a 3 mana 3 1 elemental, blazing accretion. Battle cry destroy the top 3 cards of your deck. Any fire spells or elementals are drawn instant. So this is potentially a 3 mana 3 1 draw 3, which is really nice and also activates your elementals uh, synergies. If the elemental fire mage actually a real deck, this card is like one of the best cards in that deck. And I actually believe it's going to be a very powerful deck. For that reason, I'm actually going to give this stars five stars in standard. In wild, I'm going to give it three. Moving on here to a new arcane spell uh, for mage, which is a four mana pocket dimension. Discover a spell, repeat until you see one for the second time. Now, at a base level, you're discovering at least two spells, but you're spending four mana to do so. It's a little bit slow. Uh, we do have like Primordial Glyph, which is two mana arcane, discover a spell, and you get a discount on it, uh, which I believe is like the base level for discover in these days. Pocket Dimension, a little bit expensive. Maybe if you're greedy, you run this in your Reno Mage, but I don't see it. I'm going to give this card two stars in standard. In wild, I'm going to give it one. Next up here, we have our first... Uh, legendary for mage, which is 5 mana, 5-5 five, five Jedi, Exarch, Hataru, Battlecry, discover a spell and reduce its cost by 1. If you play it this turn, repeat this effect. So potentially here, if you like keep discovering and playing those spells, you're gonna like be chaining and almost go infinite, but not really. Like if you keep discovering 1 cost spells, sure, you're gonna uh, keep like discovering uh, extra spells. This is some nice uh, value generator. At the base level, it's 5 mana, 5-5, five, five. you discover a spell, and you get a discount. And if you play it late in the game, you're most probably going to be able like to play that spell. Maybe you can like pick the cheapest one so you can get some chaining. Uh, it's actually pretty decent. I'm going to give it a 3 stars in standard, not quite 4 stars. In wild, I'm going to give it 2. Next up, we have another Draenei for Mage, which is the Ingenious Artificer. 5 mana, 4, 6 with battle cry. The next Rena you play refreshes mana crystals equal to its attack. Now, this is a lot of mana cheat. And we saw already we have like uh, some high attack Draenei's that are gonna like refresh a lot of mana. And I cannot sleep on mana cheat. If the Draenei archetype for mage is actually pretty good, this uh, card is minimum 4 stars in standard. But if not, it's gonna be like a 3 star ish card. 
for that reason, I'm gonna stay on the safe side. I'm gonna give it three stars in standard. In what? I'm gonna give it two. I don't think like a Draenei mage is gonna be a thing in what. Next up, we have another fire spell, which is uh, the Solar Flare. It's a five mana spell, deal two damage to all enemies. So basically consecration, but it costs one less for each elemental you control. Now, we already saw uh, a couple of elementals and fire spells. And I believe this archetype will actually be good. So if you think about it, like let's say you have like uh, two, three elements on the board. This is like two mana or three mana deal two damage to all main enemies, which is really good. And anything beyond that, it's actually broken. And also if you have like uh, some spell damage on board, uh, it's gonna scale with it. And if it uh, gets shuffled uh, thanks to Blasteroid, it's also gonna get an extra discount on it, which is really nice. Uh, for that reason, I'm going to give this card 4 stars in standard. In wild, I'm going to give it 3. And speaking of spell damage, we have the other legendary uh, 4 mage, which is Sarun. I believe that's his name. It's a 6 mana, 7-6 seven, elemental with battle cry. Give all elementals in your deck fire spell damage plus 1. All your elementals in your deck are going to have fire spell damage plus 1. And you're only like running uh, fire spells in your deck. They're all going to be pumped. You're going to get some discounts on them. I believe this archetype is going to be super good. Now, Sarun on its own is a little bit slow, in my opinion, in that deck. That deck wants to go a little bit faster. Like, you want to build a board. You want to, like, burn the opponent with some fire spells. But I can see it, like, slotting in. It's just legendary. Like, you're going to run one copy of it. And you're not sad, like, to, uh, to play it if the game uh, goes longer. For that reason, I'm actually going to give him four stars in standard. In wild, I'm going to give him two. Moving on here to the Arcwing Pilot, which is a 7 mana 40 Draenei. At the end of your turn, deal 3 damage to a random enemy. Spell Burst, summon an Arcwing Pilot. Now, the Spell Burst on a 7 cost minion is going to be a little bit tricky to activate, but as we saw, there are ways uh, for the Draenei like, to get some mana crystal back, uh, thanks to, for example, the Ingenious Artificer, uh, which is really nice uh, combo with this. But I don't know what you're doing with this. Like, yeah, sure, you summon another one, and maybe like you activate uh, your spell birds a second time. You're just dealing like uh, three damage to a random enemy. That's not a game-winning play. Yeah, you're getting also some four threes, but they can easily be removed at this stage of the game by the opponent. Now, I don't know. Draenei's for mage is gonna be a thing. As I said, I believe the elementals, uh, fire spells archetype is going to be like the main archetype for mage and the more powerful one, in my opinion. For that reason, I'm going to give this card a two stars in standard. In wild, I'm going to give it one. And finally here for mage, we have a really big fire spell, which is the supernova. It's an eight cost uh, fire spell. Fill your hand with random fire spells. They cost one. So the idea here, you play this on turn 10. You're going to be immediately... Uh, be able to like play uh, two of these fire spells and uh, for future turns if your hand was like relatively empty you're gonna be like uh, uh, spell slinging the opponent with some fire spells maybe they're gonna be uh, some fireballs or uh, some of the cards we just seen but eight mana is a little bit expensive uh, for that type of archetype for that reason just because it's an eight mana spell i'm gonna give this card three stars or maybe an optimistic three maybe you run it as a one-off in your top end and in wild i'm gonna give it one you're not playing an eight cost spell do nothing in wild moving on here to paladin and paladin got some interesting and strong cards and also uh, we're going to see the return of Libra paladin starting up here we have a one mana spell which is the orbital satellite uh, it's discover a draenei if you play the adjacent card this turn discover another so this is potentially a one mana draw two. Uh, it is specifically to Draenei. Now, I don't know if there are like uh, specific Draenei you want to target with this. And we're going to see like a couple of them for Paladin. And also, you, you know, in the Discover pool, we have the neutral ones. So uh, as a base level, it's a one mana uh, Discover one, which is not inherently bad. It could be beneficial for your game plan. For that reason, I'm actually going to give it uh, three stars i could give it four but like i don't see it as a core piece in your paladin deck and in wild i'm gonna give it two next up we have our first uh librem synergy card it's a two mana two two draenei hey you can discover it uh, with the first spell we saw the interstellar researcher and has battle cry and spell burst draw a librem now 
Uh, this is really nice card. Like at a base level, you have a two mana two two draw a specific card, which is really good and has potential uh, to draw like two cards. And also the second card is also a Librem that you want to discount as we're going to see in a bit. So for that reason, and I'm gonna give it four stars in standard, maybe five. Uh, but no, I'm gonna stick with four. It's four stars in standard. And three stars in wild. Actually, Librem could make a comeback uh, with all these support pieces. Next up, we have another uh, Librem synergy card, which is a new weapon uh, for Paladin. Three mana, two, three with Battle Cry and Death Rattle. Reduce the cost of your Librems by one this game. We've already seen uh, this type of effect in the past. Uh, we saw it on a one mana, one, three, and on a five mana, four, six with Taunt, I believe where you discounted your Librem by one this game, but this one has the potential to uh, discount your Librem by two, just alone, because uh, we have it on the Battle Cry and the Death Rattle. And keep in mind, if you have other weapons uh, in your deck, you can break it immediately, to, like discount them immediately by two. And as a standalone weapon with that effect, uh, the stats and like, like the attack and the durability on this weapon are not bad. I believe I'm going to give this 4 stars as well in standard. In wild, I'm going to give it 3. Moving on here to our first new Librem, which is a holy spell, and it's a 3 mana Librem of Clarity. It says, draw 2 minions. If this costs 0, give them plus 2, plus 1. So as we saw, there are ways to like discount your Librems, and if you play it for 0 mana, you buff both the minions you draw. Now, at a base level, if you play it for 3 mana, it's not inherently bad. It's like an arcane intellect, but you're drawing specifically minions. And uh, when you discount it at least once, it's a really strong card. Like, 2 mana, 1 mana, drawing 2 minions is really powerful. And of course, if you get it at 0 mana, it's the nuts. So, for that reason, I'm gonna give this card actually 5 stars in standard, just because you can play this card outside of Librem, even though I think like Librem Paladin is going to be the main theme for Paladin this expansion. But I believe like this card, you can play it outside of that archetype as well. So for that reason, I'm going to give it five stars in standard. In wild, actually, I'm going to give it four because there are some OTK Paladins uh, in wild and then they want to tutor some minions maybe so they can use this card. For that reason, I'm going to give it four. Moving on here, yet another uh, Librem Synergy card. It's also a Draenei, it's a 4 mana 4 2 with Divine Shield, and Battle Cry reduced the cost of your Librems by 1 this game. So, this one, unlike the weapon, is gonna discount them only by 1 by itself, because the weapon has it on the Battle Cry and the Death Rattle. But it's actually like a really strong minion with a strong presence, uh, thanks to Divine Shield, and also the effect is really good. And also, if you slot in, as we said, like uh, the orbital satellite and uh, we said like if you're interested to discover more draenei that advances your game plan uh, you can even discount uh, your librams further now it's not going to be reliable because we know there are a lot of draenei uh, that got added to the neutral pool but you have a high chance of hitting one of these and it's actually really good and of course if you're playing librams you're gonna want uh, this card in your deck for that reason i'm gonna give it also four stars in standard and three stars in wild Next up, we have yet another new Librem, which is a holy spell, 4 mana, Librem of Divinity. It says, give a minion, plus 3, plus 3. If this costs 0, return this to your hand at the end of your turn. Now, at a base level, 4 mana to give a minion, plus 3, plus 3, uh, is not very good. Like, we already have the Blessing of Kings, which is 4 mana, give a minion, plus 4, plus 4. But, because it's a Librem, you're not going to be playing it for 4 mana, it's going to get discounted. And if you get it to 0 mana, you'll have like an infinite buff, but you cannot spam it in the same turn. You're going to be able to use it once every turn. But you're going to have it infinitely for 0 mana, which could be very powerful. And as you know, we have cards like uh, Lady Liadren, if you have maybe a Charger in hand, 1 mana, 1, 1 boar. And uh, you get a bunch of these uh, from Liadren, uh, you can like uh, kill the opponent out of nowhere. And I really like uh, this type of design where uh, if you can discount it to zero, uh, you get an extra effect. And also, I'm gonna give it four stars in standard and three stars in wild, uh, like all the other Librem Synergy cards. And speaking of Librem Synergy cards, we have our first Paladin Legendary, uh, which is Yerald. Well, uh, Yerel has already, I think, uh, two or three cards. So it's a five mana for three Draenei 
with rush and that threat will get three different Librams from an older timeline. Now, as you know, uh, we had, I believe, in Ashes of Outland, three different Librams, and we got uh, one in the Dark Moon races. The fourth Librim, which is the weapon one, uh, is not going to get included in this. You are guaranteed to get the three Librims from Ashes of Outland. And if you want to see which one of them, you have Librim of Justice, you have uh, Librim of Hope, and Librim of Wisdom. And of course, here the Overdue Justice is like the weapon for this, and this is the token for the Librim of Hope. Now, this is actually a pretty good card. Like, this is a really good hand refill, and they're most probably going to be cheap if you're playing it uh, in the late game. In the early game, uh, it can take a nice trade. If it dies, you get also some kind of resources. I'm actually going to give this card uh, 4 stars in standard. In white, I'm going to give it 3. Moving on here, we have a new holy spell, which is Celestial Aura for 6 mana. While you have exactly one minion in play, its attack and health are 10, and last three turns like all the auras. Now, I have a little bit of mixed feelings about this aura. Like, I feel like this is a, a card that doesn't belong in everything we've seen so far. Like, if you want to commit to the Librams, you want to like build a board, you're not gonna have like one minion in play. And even if you do, like, you're paying six mana for this effect. Yes, you're gonna have a 10-10 minion, but that's it. If you Summon another minion. If you hero power, this effect uh, is gonna be like nothing. And usually Paladin likes to go wide, likes to buff stuff, likes to buff multiple minions, not just focus uh, all their buffs on one minion. For that reason, I'm gonna give this uh, two stars in standard. It's like like inherently bad card, but it doesn't fit any archetype and doesn't fit what Paladin wants to do. For that reason, I'm gonna give it two stars in standard and a one star in wild. Moving on here, yet another Librem, which is a holy spell. It's a Librem of Face for 6 mana. It summons 3, 3-3 three, three Draenei with Divine Shield. If this costs 0, give them Brush. Now at a base level, summoning 9-9 nine, nine in stats with Divine Shield for 6 mana is not bad. Like, it's actually already at a base level a really good card. And the further we discount it, it becomes uh, an even more threatening card because... If you put it down for 0 mana, you get 9-9 nine, nine in stats with Divine Shield and Rush that you have all the mana available still to like buff them and do a lot of shenanigans with them. For that reason, this is a really nice card. I'm going to give it 4 stars in standard. In wild, like all the other Librams, and I'm going to give it 3. And finally here for Paladin, really cool design, we have the other legendary, which is Lumia, a 6 mana 9-9 nine nine with lifesteal. After a hero takes damage, they become immune for the rest of the turn. So, not only your hero, it says after a hero takes damage. So even if you, like, uh, damage your opponent once, it's like evasion. If you remember the secret evasion uh, for rogue, it uh, acts the same way. So if you attack with one minion or with a weapon or if you deal damage through a spell, the hero is going to become immune for the rest of the turn. Then you pass the turn and the immune effect is gone. Now, a 6 mana 9-9 nine nine lifesteal is a big stat and this is a big heal. And I see this mostly uh, in like decks that want to stall for some kind of uh, combo or some kind of OTK. Uh, because you don't care if your opponent also becomes immune because you're not uh, going aggro on them. You just want to like reach your OTK and combo them down. And I believe this is a really nice card. But it's a little bit too slow for wild. Like in standard we don't have like OTK decks. But in wild we do have some of them. But this is way too slow for them. For that reason, I'm actually going to give it 2 stars in standard. In wild, I'm not going to be so harsh on it. I'm going to give it 2 stars as well. But this is really nice card. Moving on here to Zeddy's favorite class, which is Priest. Don't tell him I said that. So starting up here, we have 0 mana spell, which is Gravity Lapse. It sets every minion's attack and health to the lowest of the two. So let's say supposedly you have 1-4 minion and let's say a 3-2 minion. So the 1-4 minion is going to become a 1-1 one, one, and the 3-2 minion is going to become a 2-2. Two, two. Now, how good is this effect? Like, yes, it can like uh, lower the power of a board and it's 0 mana. We cannot like sleep on 0 mana cards. Mm, but it's not like a board clear on its own. Like, I don't know what kind of priest wants this card, but it's a weird effect. I don't know how to actually evaluate this. Uh, for that reason, I guess I'm going to give it 3 stars in standard. In wild, I don't think Priest uh, wants some kind of cards. 
unless they want some kind of like zero mana cost to like chain into some kind of miracle deck maybe i can see it seeing play for that reason i'm gonna give it two stars in wild next up we have a new draenei and also like uh, the hearthstone team are trying to push some kind of draenei priest archetype let's see if it works out we have a one mana three three draenei i believe this is one of the biggest uh, one drops we have in the game but of course it has a downside with death rattle restore six health to the enemy hero but with spell burst uh, you get to silence this minion honestly i see this card as a shadow priest and wild because it's a monster uh, of a one drop you have like three three in stats and uh, it's very easy like to activate it with some cheap shadow spells uh, already available for priest and wild now in standard um you can still play it as uh, as a one drop like uh, even if you're playing like some kind of control priest or a drain eye priest and you want like a big body on board to take some favorable trades and you don't care about like restoring health with the enemy hero and you have like a way to like silence it if they don't kill it immediately like if you have a two mana spell on turn two to follow it up uh, maybe you, you cast a spell that kills a minion uh, the spell burst uh, activates on this they don't get the heals when they kill it all is good for that reason i'm actually gonna give this card four stars in standard and in wild i'm actually gonna give it five because shadow priest in wild is a very popular deck and it's a very strong deck and this is a really strong addition to that deck next up we have a new holy spell uh for a priest the divine star it's a two mana d3 damage to a minion give a random minion in your hand plus three health now as we said like two mana d3 to a minion is okay and you get a bonus to having like plus three health on a minion in your hand which is also nice so for that reason i'm actually gonna give this card three stars in standard in wild i'll also give it three stars like if you're playing some kind of reno priest you want some early game removal even though priest already has a lot of early game removals but you can slot in a one-off uh, in the reno priest moving on here we have light speed it's a two mana holy spell give a minion plus one plus two and rush repeatable this turn so repeated this turn is like the echo mechanic as long as you have the mana uh, to play this you can play it as many times as you want during that turn so two mana give a minion plus one plus two and rush uh i don't know how like uh, how efficient is that like if you play it let's say twice like four mana give a minion plus two plus four and rush but rush uh, they get it once uh, if we go for six mana you're giving a minion plus three plus uh plus six it's not very exciting now yes you can give like multiple minions but if you're giving multiple minions rush they either don't have the summoning sickness anymore so they can attack naturally or uh you don't have the mana left uh, to like play those minions i don't know it's a very clunky card maybe you need it as a holy spell maybe you need it to, like activate your spell burst but i don't know i don't see it i'm gonna give it two stars in standard and while i'm gonna give it one Moving on here to another two mana holy spell, the orbital halo, give a minion, plus two plus one, and divine shield, cost zero if we played an adjacent card this turn. Now, this is an interesting card. Like, you're giving the same amount of stats, but like in reverse, like plus two plus one instead of plus one plus two, but you're also giving a minion divine shield, like you're protecting it, and you have the potential to play it for zero mana, uh, which can be like super easy if you don't have like a very high curve. I'm actually gonna give this. Uh, three stars in standard and wild i'm gonna give it two next up we have uh, another draenei for priest which is a three mana two four anchorite whenever another minion is overhealed give it that much extra health now we just saw uh in the latest patch uh like overheal priest uh, got nerfed a little bit but it's still a decent deck i guess and i don't know if this is like enough to re-push it uh, back to the top but it's not a bad card so for that reason i'm gonna give it three stars in standard in wild i'm gonna give it two moving on here we have our first priest legendary which is a three mana three three a cure i believe cure cure i don't know how to pronounce this anyway uh, the light beyond it has spell burst summon a random three cost minion holy spells don't remove the spell burst now as you know a spell burst is like a one a time activation so if a minion on board has spell burst you play a spell you activate the effect and the spell burst it's gone you're not going to be able like to activate the spell burst multiple times but for this minion specifically uh if you play a holy spell the spell burst is going to activate 
And this minion is still going to have spell rush, so you can activate it multiple times. But once you play a non-holy spell, uh, the spell rush is going to go away. And you already seen like a couple of them. Like I know like the idea is like you play uh, the the light beyond here and you play multiple where was it? Light speed. Yeah, there you go. You play like multiple light speed and you start summoning some uh, three cost minions, but it's very slow. Like you have to pay the three first on this one. Then you have to pay two extra, like we're talking here, like uh, turn seven, turn nine, maybe it, like benefit really from this. I believe like Priest has better stuff to do at this point of the game. So, but this alone, if you have like a couple of uh, zero cost spells, like the one we saw here, and uh, well, like one cost spells, they can activate this spell burst easily, but they have to be holy spells. This one is not holy spells, so scratch that. <laughs> so you have to have like some cheap holy spells to combine this. But just getting some random three cost. I'm not very excited about this legendary uh, for that reason. But it's not that bad. I'm gonna give it three stars, an optimistic three. In wild, I'm gonna give it one. You're not playing this in wild. Next up, we have re a really cool design here. I don't know if it's gonna be good, but it's very cool design. It's the mystified Toka. Tokka, Tocha, I, I don't know how to pronounce this. It's a 4 mana 4 2 with Battle Cry. If the combined health of both heroes is exactly 42, set your hero's health to 42. Now, this is potentially a very big heal, but a very harsh condition. Like, you have to have like the addition or the sum of both your health and your opponent's health equal to 42. And if you're trying like uh, to like heal your opponent, heal yourself, hit the opponent, just to get this effect, which means like you're spending some resources, some mana, uh, maybe you're whiffing on some attacks just to try and activate this, uh, like just run some healing spells, I guess, instead of this. And it's not like uh, on a very good body, it's just a four mana for two. Like for the memes, it's really nice. And when it actually works out, it's a really nice heal, but I still don't see it. It doesn't have like the Draenei text, so it doesn't like synergizes uh, with the Draenei Priest tech. So for that reason, I'm actually going to give this card two. I'm not going to give it one because it's a very cool design. I'm going to give it two stars in standard. In wild, I'm going to give it one. Moving on here, we have another priest legendary. And this one has the Draenei Synergy. It's the Askarov, 5 mana, 4, 5 with battle cry. The next Draenei you play summons a copy of itself. Now, this is a very powerful effect. We've already seen like some uh, very strong uh, Draenei's. They have like big stats or maybe some big effects or big death rattles more specifically and this lets you set this up and doesn't have to be this turn so you don't have to combine it you can play it on curve on turn five maybe on turn six you have a very powerful draenei with a powerful death rattle that you get to summon a copy of it uh, actually this is a really nice card i'm gonna give it four stars in standard and what i'm gonna give it two i don't think like draenei priest is gonna be a thing in wild and finally here, uh, we were just talking about like summoning a copy of a powerful Draenei. We have the Shield of Ascara. It's a 6 mana 4-8 with Taunt, Divine Shield, and Lifesteal. Like this is the control deck's dream. This is a really sticky minion that heals you a bunch, uh, creates a big speed bump for aggro decks. And if you play this on curve after Ascara, uh, you get like 2-4-8 with Taunt, Divine Shield, and Lifesteal, which is really nice. And if actually, like, Draenei Priest is a thing, uh, I think uh, this is going to be a part of it. For that reason, I'm going to give it four stars in standard. In Wild, again, uh, where the metagame is way faster, I'm going to give it two stars. Moving on here to Rogue. Rogue got some interesting cards and maybe some broken ones. Well, we'll see. Starting up here, we have 1 mana 2 1 Draenei, the Space Rock Collector. With Battle Cry, your next combo card costs 1 less. This is a very powerful card in my opinion. First off, it activates your combo and it pays for itself. So, because you're paying for 1 mana and you're getting a 1 mana discount on your combo card, it's like you paid nothing for your combo. And we also saw this effect in the past on a 2 mana 3 2 that discounted by 2, also which paid for itself. And that card saw a lot of play. So I believe this one, it's even cheaper. You can activate the combos easier. I'm going to give this uh, four stars in standard. In wild, I'm going to give it three. Actually, I believe it could see play in wild. Next up, we have Starship Schematic, which is a one mana spell. Discover Starship piece from another class. And Rogue is going to be one of the Starship classes. 
And you're going to see, like, we're going to have a theme with these Starship pieces. Uh, they're going to be, like, stealing Starship pieces from other classes. But I don't think it's going to be very powerful, especially in Rogue, because Rogue has other plans. Rogue likes to play fast. Rogue likes to play a lot of cards. They don't like uh, to play a very slow game where they, like, build a Starship. They have to pay five mana for it. Even though they got a Legendary uh, for their Starship, I don't think Starship Rogue is going to be any good. For that reason, I'm going to give this card two stars in standard. In wild, I'm going to give it one. Next up. We have a new demon uh, for Rogue, which is the Eredar Skulker. It's a 2 mana 1 3 demon with combo and spell burst, gain plus 2 attack and stealth. I believe this is a very powerful card, and even though if you just combo it, you get a 2 mana 3 3 with stealth, which is really good. And as we saw, there are some easy ways to like uh, combo some cards, and if you get the spell burst, it's a 2 mana 5 3 with stealth. And also, you can like combo it. Take a trade, then activate the spell burst, give it stealth again. This is really versatile card, it's a really strong presence. I'm gonna give it 4 stars in standard. In wild, I'm gonna give it 2, because it doesn't have a deck that fits in. Because you're either like playing Pirate Rogue in wild, or maybe King's Bane, or some kind of miracle deck. For that reason, I'm gonna give it 2 stars in wild. Next up, we have Lucky Comet. Uh, beautiful artwork by the way. It's a 2 mana spell, discover a combo minion. The next one you play triggers its combo twice. Now, I don't know uh, what are like the combo minions that you're very excited to activate in additional time, uh, but this is pretty sweet card. Like uh, you're getting a card, you're getting like a specifically a combo minion. So if you don't have one in hand, uh, you can discover one to activate it twice. And it's more specifically, you should know that the next one you play triggers is combo twice and it says combo minion. So it doesn't like uh, if you have like a combo spell, it's not going to activate twice. So it's like... If you eviscerate the opponent, uh, you're not going to play a 2 mana deal 8 damage. So they know what they're doing here. And for that reason, because of this limitation, I'm actually going to give it 3 stars. Maybe an optimistic 3 stars. In wild, I'm going to give it 1. I don't know where you're playing this in wild. Next up, we have a new Draenei, which is the Scrounging Shipwright. It's a 2 mana 3 2. With Death Rattle, get a random starship piece from another class. Yet again... Uh, we're getting a random starship piece. Uh, it's not very exciting stat line. It's on a death rattle. I'm gonna give it. Uh, I'm gonna give it two stars in standard. In wild, I'm gonna give it one. Next up, we have better roll. It's a three mana. Deal five damage to an undamaged character. Cost one if you're building a starship. Now the condition of building a starship is really annoying because I don't think starship rogue is gonna be any good. But three mana deal five damage to an undamaged character. We saw this. Uh, I don't know if it was called Shadow Strike or something like that. Uh, you know, uh, back in the day, I think it's an old god's uh, spell. Anyway, so 3 mana deal 5, not very exciting. Decent, but not very exciting. Cost 1. Now, 1 mana deal 5 is really good, but you have to be building a starship. For that reason, I'm going to give it also 2 stars in standard, 1 star in wild. Next up, we have a new Shadow spell. It's a 3 mana pressure points. Deal 3 damage to a minion. Reduce the cost of combo cards in your hand by 1. Now, this is some mass mana cheat. And it doesn't come like just a spell that reduces cards in your hand. It Also, you can like deal 3 damage to a minion. So, it's a removal uh, combined with mana cheat. This card actually could be good. If you have like a bunch of good combo cards, uh, this card uh, is going to be good. Also, in future sets, if we get even like better combo cards, this becomes even better. For that reason, I'm going to give it 4 stars in standard. In wild, I'm going to give it 2. Hey, we have our first legendary for uh, Rogue, and it's a bad one. It's a 4 mana 4-4 four, four demon, Talgath. Undamaged enemy minions take double damage. Combo, get a backstab. Now, this is a horrible legendary. Do you want me to explain why, or do I just give the star ratings? Okay, I'm going to explain why. First of all, you're playing a 4 mana 4-4. Four, four. Uh, second, undamaged enemy minions take double damage. We already have, like, I believe, Tar Slick. It's a one mana spell, and all minions uh, take uh, double damage, uh, not only like uh, the ones that are undamaged. And also, to get the backstab, you have to combo it. And I believe a lot of you are gonna forget to, to combo this card and gonna be expecting the backstab because it's so bad. And even if it gives you the, the backstab, it's still a bad card that you're gonna forget to activate its combo. For that reason, I'm gonna give this card. You know what? I'm not going to be very harsh. I'm going to give it two stars. Like, you can slot it as your 30th card, but 
two stars in standard, one star in wild. And hey, speaking of starship pieces, and uh, as we said, they got a legendary. Well, here it is. It's a five mana four three starship piece, the gravitational displacer. When this is launched, summon a copy of the starship. Now you have to play a five mana four three do nothing. You have to wait on it to, uh, to die, and then when you launch your starship after you paid another five mana in rogue. You're gonna get a copy of it and you don't know what the effect is gonna be because rogue is gonna be stealing some random starship pieces from other classes maybe they don't have synergy with rogue maybe they don't have synergy with, with each other but you're gonna get two starships but rogue doesn't play for the late game if this was in another class if this wasn't druid it would be busted don't get me wrong this is a very powerful effect but they gave it to the wrong class so for that reason i'm gonna give this card Two stars? Maybe I'm being too harsh. I mean, it's better than the first legendary. I'm gonna give it three stars then. In wild, I'm gonna give it one. You're not playing like Starship Rogue in wild. And finally here, you know what? I'm just gonna give it five stars in standard, five stars in wild. Well, wait, we're gonna have to explain it a bit. Okay, so this is a six mana Kazar. Uh, shuffle your hand at your deck, reduce the cost of cards in your deck by three. And this card broke the theory crafting stream. And I believe it's gonna be an insanely good card, even on ladder. I hope they nerf it. Usually they don't like uh, nerf a card before it comes out, just because of the theory crafting stream. But I believe this card is gonna be one of the cards that's gonna be hit really fast. Either like I don't know, uh, the reduction here is gonna be like reduce them by one or by two, or maybe increase the mana uh, cost on this one to seven or eight, because like you can prep it out on turn four. You can have like your knickknack shack ready on the board and a lot of draw spells and then like you shuffle some meteors, you buff them and you start like uh, spamming and uh, killing the opponent with those meteors all in one turn, which is insane. This card is really bonkers. As it stands out right now uh, in this form, I believe this is a five stars card in standard and also five stars in wild. I hope they nerf this card. Moving on to Shaman. Shaman got some really nice and powerful cards. Starting up here, we have First Contact, which is a one mana spell, summon two random one cost minions, Overlord one. Now, we've had like a similar effect, if you remember first day of school, where uh, you played it for zero mana and you add two one cost minions to your hand. Like if you play them, uh, you're gonna be like paying approximately the same because you're paying in total two mana for this. One for the initial cost and one for the overall and we know first day of school was a very powerful card now unlike first day of school uh, you don't get the battle cries uh, on these minions because you're gonna summon them immediately but it's very powerful turn one play in my opinion and uh, if you want to play for the late game um, this is actually a pretty nice spell i'm actually gonna give it four stars in standard and what i'm gonna give it two next up we have a new draenei for shaman it's a 2 mana 3 2 planetary navigator with battle cry. The next Drena you play costs 2 less but has overload 2 and doesn't say this turn. So you can bank uh, this cost reduction for maybe later. Maybe you have a powerful uh, 7 cost Drena. You play this maybe on turn 2, you sit on it, and you play your powerful Drena on turn 5 instead of turn 7. But of course, there's the downside that this Drena is going to overload you for 2. But I don't believe like you care too much about this uh, overload tax because you're already cheating the mana out and you're getting them really early. It's like uh, they cancel each other out. You got a two mana discount and you overload it for two. But the benefit, you got to play your card earlier, which is really nice. And also it's a two mana three two, like it's not inherently badly started. For that reason, I'm going to give it three stars in standard. And what? I'm going to give it two. Next up, we have a two mana spell, which is the triangulate. Discover a different spell from your deck so you cannot discover itself and shuffle three copies of it into your deck So this is a way to like if you're playing uh, Versus a control deck and you have a very powerful spell you can shuffle extra copies to like grind your opponent out and Also, uh, you get the spell in your hands So it's not like two mana to shuffle extra copies into your deck you get uh, the original spell in your hand and then you shuffle three copies so maybe it helps you like find a key spell maybe a removal uh, maybe some way to heal play some taunts because uh, we know uh, shaman has ways like to summon taunts through spells etc etc this is really nice card and if you play for example reno shaman this is really good because we know like the new rule for 
uh, Reno cards, even if you shuffle like uh, duplicates in your deck, they're not going to affect their battle cry because they check it at the start of the game right now. Uh, not the old ones. So if you're playing in wild, you should be careful. Uh, your old Reno is going to be deactivated if you play this card. But the new one, like the hero card, is not going to be affected. So you can play it in Reno a Shaman in standard. For that reason, I'm going to give this card 4 stars in standard. In wild, um, I'm going to give it 2. Maybe 3? No, I'm going to give it 2 because you cannot play it in Reno Shaman in wild. Next up, we have a very powerful elemental for a Shaman. Uh, the Ultraviolet Breaker, which is a 3 mana 3 2 elemental with battle cry, deal 3 damage to an enemy minion. So already you get for 3 mana a body on board and uh, potential removal. And you shuffle 3 asteroids into your deck. And the asteroids are a cast when drawn uh, and deals 2 damage to a random enemy. And we're going to see as well there is ways to like buff your asteroids in a bit. And uh, this is a very powerful card. And Asteroid Shaman is going to be powerful in my opinion. For that reason, I'm going to give it 4 stars in standard, 3 stars in wild. Speaking of asteroids and buffing them, we have the Bolid, Bolide, I don't know how to pronounce this. Anyway, the Bolid Behemoth, a uh, 4 mana 3, 6 elemental with battle cry, your asteroids deal 1 more damage this game. Spell burst, shuffle 3 of them into your deck. So this is a way to like shuffle more asteroids, make them deal more damage. Shaman will like this card because it's an elemental. And as we said, Asteroid Shaman, in my opinion, is going to be a powerful archetype. For that reason, I'm going to give it 4 stars in standard, 3 stars in wild. Next up, we have our first Shaman Legendary, which is 5 mana, 6, 4, Draenei, Farseer, Nobandu. Uh, Death Rattle, open the Galaxy Lands, it absorbs the power of the next spell you cast. And the Galaxy Lands is like a new location. Uh, you don't have like to pay the 5 mana on it, it's gonna get summoned immediately when Farseer Nobondo dies. And it has Spell Burst, Absorb the Spell's Power. So how this card works. So you play uh, Farseer Nobondo, let's say on turn 5, it dies, you're gonna get immediately the location. And it's gonna have the Spell Burst on it. Once you cast your first spell, that spell's power is gonna... Uh, be contained inside the location. So when you activate the location, it's gonna cast that spell. It's not gonna cast any sp other spell you play after it, just the first spell you play after you summon the location. So, for example, let's take uh, First Contact, which is not a really good example, but it's a spell that we saw earlier. Uh, you get the, uh, the Galaxy Lands, you play First Contact, you activate the Spell Burst. Now, every time you're gonna activate uh, this location, it's going to cast first contract. Now, of course, uh, we have better spells that you're going to see in a bit that are way better to activate with this. So this is actually a pretty nice card. A lot of value uh, bundled into one single minion. Like you get the minion, location, potential, two spells in it. For that reason, I'm actually going to give it three stars just because it's on the death rattle. If it was on a battle cry, I'd give it four stars in a heartbeat. But... It's on a death rattle. For that reason, I'm going to give it 3 stars in standard, 2 stars in wild. Next up, we have Meteor Storm. This is really nice artwork, by the way. 6 mana, nature spell, uh, deal 5 damage to all minions, shuffle 5 asteroids into your deck. And we're not going to repeat this. Asteroid Shaman is going to be super powerful. You're getting 5 of them and a board clear in one card. This is a 4 star card in standard, 3 stars in wild. And next up, we have, in my opinion, one of the best legendaries in the set, not all, uh, only for Shaman. It's a 6 mana, 6 6 elemental uh, that's called Murmur. Your Battlecry minions cost 1, but immediately die after being played. This is an insanely broken effect. Uh, I'm not gonna explain why. Like, the card explains itself. This is a 5 star card in standard, and also a 5 stars in wide, in my opinion. This is gonna enable. A lot of mana cheat, a lot of combos, and a lot of shenanigans for Shaman. Uh, so yeah, this is a 5 star card. Next up, we have a new Draenei. It's a 7 mana 5-5, five five, the Cosmonaut. Battle Cry, discover a spell from your deck, reduce its cost by 5. So you're playing a not so good minion, like a 7 mana 5-5, five five, but you get to discover a spell from your deck and get some mana cheat on it. And we know Shaman has some good big spells, like for example the Meteor Storm we just saw. You can play it like for one mana, and uh, you can like give it uh, to the Galaxy Lands, which is really nice. And also we're going to see 
uh, yet another big spell in a bit, but it's a 7 mana 5-5. Five five. Yes, there is some mana cheat, but uh, you're not going to be, like, be able to cheat it out super early because you have to pay the 7 mana first. Uh, for that reason, I'm going to give it 3 stars in standard. In wild, I'm going to give it 2. And finally here, speaking of the big spells, also beautiful artwork. You're going to see, I'm going to be saying that a lot, but this set has one of the best artworks we've ever had in Hearthstone. Like, this set is beautiful. Anyway, uh, it's a 9 mana arcane spell, Nebula, discover 2 8 cost minions to summon with taunt and elusive. So, this is really nice. Like, you're getting to discover your 8 costs, you can like pick the best out of the 3. Uh, you give it taunt and elusive, then you discover again another 8 cost, and you give it taunt and elusive. Very sticky minion, super strong if you can like give it to the galaxy lands, but again, it's a 9 mana spell. Yes, you can cheat it out with the cosmonaut, like you can discover it in your deck, reduce it by 5, play it for 4 mana, but you're not gonna play it earlier than uh, turn 8, unless like you, you, there are ways like to cheat out uh, this Draenei, but this is very clunky, it's a lot of pieces together. It's very slow, uh, and I don't think like the meteorite uh, shaman. I believe it's meteorite asteroid. Excuse me. I don't believe the asteroid shaman uh, would want this card, but it's not inherently bad. For that reason, I'm gonna give it uh, three stars in standard and two stars in wild. Moving on here to warlock. Now warlock is going to be one of the starship classes, but we'll start up here with the hearthstone. It's a zero mana fell spell with tradable. Restore all damage your hero has taken this turn. Now, in standard, like, uh, Pain Warlock doesn't do, like, a lot of damage in the same turn. Like, yes, you can uh, do up to 3, 5 maybe, but uh, it's not, like, a big amount that you want to heal with this. But in Wild, and if you have, like, the Demon Seed and, like, you're chaining uh, your self-damage spells, uh, you've got cards like Raise Dead, you've got uh, uh, cards like Crystallizer, this is a really nice card and also has tradable. Like, if you don't have use for it right now, you can trade it away uh, for some other card. For that reason, I'm gonna give it 3 stars in standard. In wild, I'm gonna give it 4. Next up, we have the Abduction Ray. It's a 2 mana shadow spell. Get a random demon, reduce its cost by 2. Repeatable this turn. Now, uh, Warlock has like this uh, demon archetype as we're going to see uh, with the legendary and this is uh, some ways to like to get random demons that didn't start in your deck and uh, you get some mana cheat on them which is really nice now i believe uh, you want to play this like a little bit uh, later in the game so you get the full benefit of it but even if you play it let's say on turn four or on turn six like you're gonna get a bunch of demons and hopefully you have some ways to, like stabilize until you reach your big payoffs but it's still random demons. I'm not very sold on this archetype, like just playing demons that didn't start in your deck. But I do believe in Kill Jaden. Kill Jaden, we're going to see a little bit later uh, in the neutral pool. But this card is okay. It's just okay. So for that reason, I'm going to give it three stars in standard. In wild, I'm going to give it one. You're not playing this in wild. Next up, we have a new elemental for Warlock. And we have 2 mana, 2, 3, Foreboding Flame, Battle Cry, Demons that didn't start in your deck, cost 1 less this game. So this is like a way, if you're playing this archetype, uh, you're gonna get uh, like uh, to cheat out uh, your demons even more. Like as we saw with Abduction Ray, you get to reduce them, you get to reduce them even further with this. Now this is a really nice card, like uh, it's premium status for a 2 drop, some mana cheat. If this deck would work, it's going to be thanks to this card. For that reason, I'm going to give it 3 stars in standard, 2 stars in wild. Next up, we have our first starship piece, which is the Heart of the Legion, 2 mana 3, 2. It's just lifesteal. It's a 2 mana 3, 2 lifesteal. Now, uh, on a base level, it's not very exciting, but you're going to get lifesteal on your big starship later. And we're going to see like the other starship effects, but as a standalone card, not very exciting. But if you're playing a starship warlock, you're going to want to include this. For that reason, I'm going to give it 3 stars in standard, and wild, I'm going to give it 2. Next up, we have the second starship piece, which is the Fellfire Thrusters, 3 mana, 2, 3 with spell burst, deal this minion's attack damage to 2 random enemy minions. Now, keep in mind, it deals this minion's attack damage, which means, at the base level, it's going to just deal 2 damage to 2 random enemy minions when you spell burst it. But, 
if you resummon it with your starship and your starship has for example 10 attack it's gonna deal 10 damage uh, to two random enemy minions which could be very powerful and also if you gave like your starship lifesteal you're gonna be healing for like 20 health which is really insane synergy and i believe like this is a pretty nice card like if they don't remove it you get to activate the spell burst you get to like keep uh, the early game port in check i'm gonna give it three stars in standard i'm gonna give it two stars in wild next up we have a new fell spell for warlock which is a three mana infernal uh, stratagem i believe give a minion plus three plus three if it's a demon your next one costs two less so this is a way like to buff up your demons that you're uh, generating and also uh, some mana cheat on the next one this is actually a pretty nice card also it fits outside the uh, demons didn't start in your deck archetype so you can just play it on any demon even if it started in your deck and maybe uh, we get some aggro warlock maybe pain warlock wants some buffs maybe to push more damage for that reason i'm actually gonna give it four stars in standard and wild i'm gonna give it three next up we have our first legendary four warlock it's kara i believe the dark star three mana three three spell burst steal two health from a random enemy shadow spells don't remove the spell burst we already explained with priest how it works uh with the uh, holy spells don't remove the spell burst it works the same way for uh, this one but with shadow spells now steal two health from random enemy i don't know how often are you going uh, to be able to activate this is it exciting do you want to run this in your deck i'm actually not very excited about this legendary i don't know uh, I, it's a bit clunky it requires a lot of mana and you're just like stealing a little bit of health here and there for that reason i'm gonna give it two stars in standard like it's not inherently bad i'm gonna give it an optimistic three in wild i'm gonna give it one you're not playing this card in wild next up we have a new fell spell for six mana for uh, for warlock bad omen in two turns summon two six six demons with taunt if you're building a starship summon them now now six mana to summon 12 12 and taunt is really powerful but you have to be building a starship to summon them immediately or you're gonna have to wait two turns now in standard uh, starships a uh, warlock i believe is gonna be a thing like it's not that bad but in wild i don't see like for any class the starships being good maybe for druid because they can ramp really fast they can like uh, leverage uh, the starship and like summon it really early and you know how druid is like they cheat a lot of mana but for warlock i'm gonna give it three stars in standard and two stars in wild next up we have the other uh, legendary for warlock the flashier one i should say archimont or archimont i don't know how to pronounce this i don't know how to pronounce half the cards they're super weird names to me so it's a 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven demon with battle cry summon every demon you played this game that didn't start in your deck so now we see what is the legendary payoff for all these cards like abduction ray that we saw earlier and uh, like foreboding flame etc and uh, archimond is actually a really nice board builder but again it's random demons and maybe you're gonna want to play him more specifically with kill jaden i keep mentioning kill jaden because it's a super cool card but I can't wait to like show it to you. But anyway, this is pretty nice card. I believe like uh, I'm gonna give it four stars in standard, just because of Kill Jaden. Again, I'm gonna show it to you in a bit. And uh, in wild, I'm gonna give it two stars. I don't think uh, this archetype like works out in wild. And finally, here if you're playing demons, you want to play this card in your deck. It's the eight mana shadow spell Black Hole. It says destroy all minions except demons. Now you could say this is a better uh, twisting nether if you're playing demons but at the same time if your opponent has demons you're not going to be able to uh, destroy them and the twisting nether just cleans the board and also destroys locations so in my opinion twisting nether is a little bit better but still not a bad card uh, i'm gonna give it three stars in standard and while even twisting nether is not seeing much play for that reason i'm gonna give it two moving on here to our final class which is warrior uh, starting off here we have two mana two two uh, weapon uh, the crystalline great maze after your hero attacks give all draenei in your hand plus two attack as we're going to see warrior got some draenei synergies how good is this now at a base level a two mana two two weapon not very exciting uh, but you have potentially like to buff all your draenei and specifically buff their attacks by plus four which could be relevant as we're going to see in a bit 
And for that reason, I'm actually gonna give it three stars in standard. In wild, I'm gonna give it two. Next up, we have a two mana spell for warrior, the Jettison. Discover a spell, spend two armor to discover another. Now this is potentially two mana, discover two spells, which could be uh, very powerful, especially if you're playing a uh, Reno warrior because you have one copy of each spell. Discover spells are usually highly wanted in Reno archetypes and you're just spending two armor and we know warrior can gain a billion armor so it's not gonna matter uh, too much. For that reason I'm gonna give it four stars in standard and while there are better ways uh, to discover stuff for warrior and they have like better cards I'm gonna give it two. Next up we have a Draenei for warrior which is a three mana three four the expedition surgeon. Battle cry, the next Rena you play immediately attacks a random enemy. Now, we need like a good Rena with a high attack and maybe some stats like lifesteal, maybe the vine shield. Now, this is a very powerful effect if you want like your Rena to attack immediately. And we're going to see there are some ones that you want uh, to activate with this. And also, it's on a 3 mana 3 4, which is premium statted. And also, you can buff uh, those Draenei's in your hand thanks to the weapon. For that reason, I'm gonna give this card 4 stars in standard. In wild, I'm gonna give it 2. And speaking of Draenei, we have a Draenei Synergy card, which is Captain's Log. It's a 4 mana, draw 2 cards, costs 1 less for each Draenei you control. So, if you at least control 1 Draenei, it's an Arcane Intellect. And... Uh, if you get like two Draenei's, three Draenei's, it becomes a really nice card. Like two mana draw two, one mana draw two. And we've seen this effect uh, for Warrior in the past, but for different conditions. And they usually see play. For that reason, I'm going to give it four stars in standard. And while, I'm going to give it two. Next up, we have a really interesting card, uh, which is a four mana seven two Draenei, the Stalwart Avenger. It has immune while attacking. And at the end of each turn, swap this minion's attack and health. So let's say you, the turn you play it, it's a 7-2, you end your turn, it becomes 2-7 on your opponent's turn, then it becomes your turn again, it's a 7-2 again, and so on. Now, uh, even at a 2-7, like, I believe they're going to be able to remove it, like they bump a few minutes into it, but that's not at the purpose of this card. You want to play this card with combination of Exped Expedition Surgeon, and also it's really nice on curve, because if you play this on turn 3, and you play this on turn 4, uh, this one is going to attack immediately and it's not going to die because it has immune while attacking. And also, you can like buff this card, we know Warrior uh, has some uh, uh, hand buff synergies and we got also the weapons that can buff the attack of Draenei's. And uh, this could be like some kind of OTK. Mark, I'm talking to you, maybe you can make an OTK out of this, I'm waiting for it. And for that reason, I'm actually going to give it 3 stars, like it's a decent card. Uh, if you're playing Draenei Warrior, and wild, I'm gonna give it two. Next up, we have yet another Draenei. It's a four mana five four. Battle cry: the next Draenei you play gives your hero its attack for that turn. So this is really interesting card because now uh, the stalwart Avenger becomes uh, more and more interesting because at a base level, if you play this and then play the stalwart Avenger, uh, you're gonna get a seven two and get seven attack on your hero. Uh, which is really powerful and if you buff this you could get even more attacks uh, This is a very scary card if Drena warrior is good This is uh, one of the cards you want to include in it and for that reason. I'm gonna give it four stars in standard I'm a little bit optimistic and wild. I'm gonna give it two And next up we have a really powerful legendary in my opinion for warrior It's a five mana three six the exarch akama after this attacks all other friendly minions can attack Again, except Exarch Akama. So it's basically like giving all your minions Wind Fury. And if you can give this Rush or uh, make it attack immediately. So for example, uh, you have a bunch of minions that can attack. Uh, you attack with them. Maybe you play uh, Expedition Sergeant. And you follow it up with an Exarch Akama. It attacks. All your minions can attack again. Which could be like lethal. And there are ways to give it Rush. You got like that zero mana spell, uh, I believe, from uh, Festival of Legends. I, you give a minion rush and it has like finale, give it plus one, plus one. That could be a combo here if you set up uh, the perfect board. And also there are in wild a lot of ways to give some minions rush. You have the animated broomstick and so on. For that reason, I'm actually going to give this 
uh, card five stars in standard and in wild also uh, because it has potential i'm gonna give it four stars next up we have a new demon for warrior uh, which is a little bit new maybe they got a couple of demons before but it's not very frequent we got the hostile invader it's a five mana three five with battle cry spell burst and death rattle deal two damage to all other minions so at a base level you play this you get the th uh, three five that deals two damage to all other minions we got a dragon in the past in Rastricon's Rumble, if you remember. It was a 5 mana 3 6 dragon that dealt 1 damage to all minions. Uh, and that uh, dragon saw play. Now, Rastricon's Rumble was a very bad expansion, but this one you're dealing double the damage and potentially uh, times 6 because Spell Burst and Death Rattle. Uh, this is really nice card. I really love this design. I'm going to give it 4 stars in standard. And wild, I'm going to give it 3. This could see play actually if you're playing some kind of control warrior. Next up, we have one of the funnest cards uh, we got in Hearthstone, and it has like some high roll potential. Also, good stats for the cost. It's a 6 mana 6 7. It has to be good. Anyway, this is the Spore Empress Moldara. It has start of game, shuffle 7, replicating spores into your deck. And the replicating spores are like 5 uh, mana spells. Uh, summon a random 5 cost minions, your future replicating spores, summon it as well. How does this work? So, the game starts, you're gonna shuffle uh, 7 of these into your deck. Once you start drawing into them and playing them, uh, they're not cast when drawn. So you have to pay the 5 mana each time. And every single time you're gonna get all the 5 cost minions uh, you've summoned uh, with other replicating spores and a new one. So let's say, uh, I don't know, you summon a Zilliax uh, for 5 mana. Then, if you play it a second time, you're gonna summon a Zilliax and let's say a Leroy. Now I'm uh, <laughs> I'm naming like some powerful five drops, but you get the gist. So if you play a third time, you're gonna summon Zilliax, Leroy. These are guaranteed because you, you summon them from the first two ones, and a third random one, and so on. And this could become a very powerful spell. Like if you play it uh, uh, for six, five cost minions for seven, you can fill the board for five mana. With five drops which could be very powerful and you already know what you're getting like once you start playing a couple of these you know on average uh, the stats and the effects of the minions you're getting so this could be actually very powerful i like this card a lot i'm gonna give it four stars in standard in wild it's a little bit too slow i'm gonna give it two and finally here for warrior we have a 10 mana spell which is the dwarf planet it says Fill your board with random two-cost minions that attack random enemies. Now you're paying 10 mana to just fill your board with random two-cost minions. And also they're attacking random enemies. I don't think this is a powerful effect. Warriors has better cards and better ways to like close out the game. And this is not one of them. For that reason, I'm going to give it two stars, I guess, in standard. Even one star. Like I don't know if you're ever playing this. So I'm going to give it one star in standard and one star in wild. And for the final part of this review, we finally reached the neutral cards. Uh, I believe this review is already pretty long, so I'm gonna go a little bit fast on these. Starting up here with Astral Vigilant, it's a 1 mana 1-1 one, one with Battle Cry. Get a copy of the last Draenei you played. Very nice cards if you're playing a Draenei deck. 4 stars in standard, 3 stars in wild. Next up, we have a 1 mana 2-1 Pirate, the Space Pirate, Death Rattle, your next weapon costs 1 less. Very strong, especially in wild. Uh, this is a 3 stars card in standard, 4 stars in wild. Uh, Starlight Wanderer, we already saw this card. So 1 mana, 2, 1 Draenei. Battle Cry, the next Draenei you play. Gains plus 2, plus 1. Again, if you're playing some Draenei, uh, you're going to want to play this card. Uh, 4 stars in standard, 2 stars in wild. Uh, next up, we have another Draenei, the Astrobiologist, 2 mana, 2, 2. Battle Cry, at the start of your next turn, discover a spell. It's a nice card, discovering a spell, uh, but it's a little bit on a delay. I'm going to give it 3 stars in standard, 2 stars in wild. Next up, we have Ringle. <laughs> this is really funny artwork. 2 mana, 2, 1 Murloc. Battle cry, give all friendly Murlocs Death Rattle, draw a card. Now, we don't have a lot of Murloc synergy in standard, but in wild, this is a bonkers card. And if we ever get in standard some Murlocs and some good ones, uh, this is one of the auto-include cards. For that reason, I'm going to give this 3 stars in standard for the time being and 4 stars in wild. Next up... We have a uh, Crystal Welder, it's a 2 mana 2-3 two, with Taunt. Battle Cry, if you're building a Starship, gain plus 2 plus 2. This is a little bit uh, like the cards to give you an example uh, of the Starship mechanic, because like if you're building a Starship, you get the bonus effect. We've seen this effect before, mainly Pack Filler, uh, 2 stars in Standard, 2 stars in Wild. 
Next up, we have a 2 mana 3 2 Draenei, the hologram operator. Battlecry, get 3 random temporary Draenei, so you want to play this in the late game. If you're playing a slow Draenei deck, maybe you want to include uh, this, but it's just some random Draenei. It's a lot of value. I'm gonna give it 3 stars in standard, 2 stars in wild. Next up, you have the Moonstone Mauler. It's a 2 mana 2 2 elemental. Battlecry, shove 3 asteroids into your deck that deal 2 damage to a random enemy when drawn. This is a staple in all the decks that want some asteroids and even some others that are not uh, asteroid focused. And it's an elemental, uh, 4 stars in standard, 3 stars in wild. Next up, we have a stranded spaceman, 2 mana, 2 3 Draenei. Battlecry, the next Draenei you play, gains plus 2 health and rush. Again, you play it in a Draenei deck. Uh, pretty sweet, 3 stars in standard, 2 stars in wild. Uh, next up, we have yet another Draenei, it's a 2 mana, 2 1, the troubled mechanic. Divine shield, spell burst, draw a Draenei. Now, this is a really nice card. I'm gonna give it actually 4 stars in standard and 2 stars in wild. Next up, you have the Crimson Commander. It's a 3 mana 4 3 Draenei. With Battlecry and Death Rattle, give all Draenei in your hand plus 1 plus 1. 3 stars in standard, 3 stars in wild. The Deep Space Curator is a 3 mana 2 4. With Spell Burst, get a random minion of the spell's cost, set its cost to 0. A uh, very niche card, a little bit random. I don't know like where you're playing this. Uh, it's not inherently bad, but I'm gonna give it three stars in standard, two stars in wild. Dimensional core, it's three mana, three two divine shield, starship. All the classes are gonna be wanting to like give their starship divine shield. So and it's an extra starship uh, to include in your starship deck. Four stars in standard, two stars in wild. Next up, the escape pod. It's a three mana, two one rush. Death rattle, give adjacent minions plus one plus one and rush. So basically, this is like to get some better trays. Pretty nice card, 3 stars in standard, 2 stars in wild. Next up, we have the Ethereal Oracle, 3 mana, 2, 3, with spell damage plus 1 and spell burst draw 2 spells. Very powerful card, 4 stars in standard, 4 stars in wild. Next up, we have a Legendary that we all got for free. Uh, we already know this card, it's not very good. 2 stars in standard, 1 star in wild. Next up, we have the Perplexing Anomaly with Rush, Taunt, and Stealth, 3 mana, 2, 5, Elemental. Uh, I don't know if you're ever like playing it this in elemental decks. I don't know if you need some more elementals, but two stars in standard, uh, one star in wild. Next up, we have three mana for two demon, the relentless wrath god, Valkyrie, deal two damage to an enemy minion. If it dies, discover a demon, mainly for the a demon warlock archetype. Three stars in standard, uh, one star in wild. Next up, we have a new rager uh, in Hearthstone, which is a three mana, five one demon. With lifesteal and spellbirds attack a random enemy minion. Now, this is not a bad rager. Like, it has lifesteal. You can make it attack immediately so you can, like, uh, get uh, some free life. And uh, people have been playing this in the theocrating stream, uh, more specifically in Kazar Rogue. So, you get some healings. Uh, you can, like, uh, get some damage in. And you can spellburst it with some zero cost spells. For that reason, I'm gonna give it two stars in standard. In wild, I'm gonna give it one. Next up, we have a new Starship piece, and this is one of the better ones. It's a 4 mana 3 4 with Taunt, and Death Rattle gains 6 armor Starship piece. Yeah, very good card, defensive, gives you some armor. You're gonna want to play this in all your Starship piece decks. Uh, 4 stars in standard, 3 stars in wild. Next up, we have Doom Maiden, which is 4 mana 4 4 Demon. Batcry, draw a card from your opponent's deck. If you don't play it this turn, put it back. You get some information, even if you don't play the card. Pretty decent, I'm gonna give it. 2 stars in standard and 1 star in wild. Then we have a 5 mana 5 5 Draenei, the Ace Way Pider. Battlecry gain 2 random bonus effect. The next Draenei you play gains them as well. If you care about Draenei, again, all the decks that want to play some Draenei, this is a pretty nice addition to them. Uh, 3 stars in standard, 2 stars in wild. And next up we have the 5 mana 6 4 Battlecry, that the cost of a random spell in your hand to this minion's cost. So you're gonna be able to cheat out some uh, big spells, maybe uh, the 9 mana spell we saw for Shaman. Uh, you can reduce its cost uh, to 5 and you can cheat it out and play it earlier. Pretty nice and also it has the Draenei synergy. For that reason I'm gonna give it 3 stars in standard, 2 stars in wild. Next up we have uh, a new Amalgam, which is the mutating life form. It has all uh, tribes, which is a 5 mana, 3, 8. After this survives damage, gain a random bonus effect. Very sticky minion and 8 health for 5 mana is a lot. Maybe some uh, classes are gonna have a hard time dealing with this because every time they're gonna bump to it, maybe they're gonna get Divine Shield, a Poisonous, 
a lifesteal and a lot of other effects for that reason i'm gonna give it actually i'm gonna give it three stars in standard and three stars in wild next up we have the starboard player it's a five mana four five with tradable battle cry destroy an enemy starship or starship piece so this is like the counter uh, for the starship decks but not so much because most of the starships uh, are gonna have the value the turn you like you launch them they're probably gonna have rush some spell burst and stuff like that and if they have death rattles star repair is gonna activate them immediately not a bad card if starships are good but i'm gonna give it two stars in standard i don't see it like being played and the one star in wild next up we have a new dragon it's five mana four seven uh, spell burst double this minion's attack this is a backfiller just to show you how spell burst work one star in standard one star in wild Maybe in arena, it's not uh, it's not that bad. Next up, again another pack filler, six mana six six rush spellburst gain divine shield, two stars in standard, one star in wild arena card. And uh, this is an interesting one, which is seven mana five six demon taunt and life steal. It costs one less for each enemy minion. This is insane against aggro, four stars in standard and four stars in wild. Very good card. Next up, we have another taunt. It's seven mana three nine draenei with taunt. Death Rattle, get two random holy spells, they cost three less. Pretty sweet card, but seven mana, three nine taunt, very, not very exciting. And getting some random holy spells, yes, you get some mana cheat on them, but not very excited about this card. Two stars in standard, one star in wild. Finally, here's Kill Jaden. I've been talking about him uh, a lot in this video, and it's a seven mana, seven seven demon with battle cry. Replace your deck with an endless portal of demons. Each turn they get an additional plus two plus two. So how is it gonna work? It's gonna destroy your deck and it's gonna replace it with a portal. And each turn you're gonna be getting bigger and bigger demons. They're gonna be random ones. And draw effect can draw into those demons and you're not gonna take fatigue damage. This is really good. And if you wanna play for the late game, you like uh, those uh, grindy decks, this is the card for you. And actually it's actually pretty good. Like uh, getting some huge demons and if the games goes on and goes on, you're probably going to be playing some 20-20 uh, demons at some point if the games goes super long. For that reason, I'm actually going to give it 4 stars in standard. That strategy in wild uh, doesn't work out that much. For that reason, I'm going to give it 3. Very good card. And we got another legendary, which is Velen. A 7 mana, 7-7, seven, seven, Draenei, Taunt, and Death Rattle trigger the battle cries and Death Rattles of all other Draenei's. You played this game. 4 stars in standard, 3 stars in wild. Very cool effect. Next up, we got a giant, which is an 8 mana 8 8 elemental, the red giant. Cost 1 less for each adjacent card played while in hand. Now, we've seen the like adjacent mechanic for Demon Hunter more specifically, but I don't think you can cheat out this one uh, fast enough. For that reason, I'm gonna give it 2 stars in standard. In wild, I'm gonna give it 1. Next, we have an 8 mana 8 8 elemental, the splitting space rock. With death rattle, summon two four four splitting boulders. Splitting boulders are gonna split into two twos, one ones, and we get the pebbles at the end. Really nice design. In arena, this is a monster. In standard, doesn't see play. Uh, I'm gonna give it two stars in standard, one star in wild. Next, we have a new legendary, which is the Exodar. It's an eight mana six ten with battle cry. If you're building a starship, launch it and choose a protocol. The protocols are. The emergency repairs, you gain armor equal to the starship's health twice. Offensive formation, you do the starship's damage, uh, excuse me, starship's attack randomly split between all enemies. And the crew transport, which is get copies of all the starship pieces, set their cost to one. This is an insanely good card if you're playing a starship deck. Auto include on those decks, four stars in standard, three stars in wild. Finally here, we have the best for last, our first 100 mana card in Hearthstone, and it's actually pretty good. It's the Ceaseless Expanse, 100 mana, 1515, cost one less for each time a card was drawn, played, or destroyed. Battle cry, destroy all other minions. Now, at first glance, it's gonna seem like very hard to like discount, but uh, as we saw specifically in the theory crafting stream, it was super easy to discount it and get it to zero. Like you're drawing you and your opponent a lot during the game. You're playing a lot of cards. Uh, destroying cards which means like trading into minions maybe killing them through spells etc etc all of these will count towards uh, the discount of this card and also it comes with a 15 15 and the board clear insane card five stars in standard five stars in wild
Also, there are in wild the uh, Holy Wrath Paladin implications. That's why I gave it also five stars. All right, that's it for this card review. We've reviewed every single card, and I know it was a little bit long, but let me know in the comments down below. Do you agree with my ratings, or do you think I got them all wrong? Share your thoughts in the comments down below, and if you've reached this far into this video, it means you're enjoying the content, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It helps me out a lot, and I will see you next time. Peace.